Hey everybody, I'm Passmore Nope, and welcome to something a little different. That's right, it's Fairy Legends of Avalon. Yeah, I know, that's kind of an off-putting title, maybe. <laughs> but, uh, this is a game that I <clears throat> saw one day on the Xbox Live Arcade, and I thought, hey, I just gotta play it, it looks kind of cool. So, go ahead and get started, and I'm gonna jump right into it here make a new character and I'm gonna get my guy set up and I'll actually be right back alright and we're back uh, I thought this looked kinda cool actually these are just two presets for the hair color and the skin color but that's kinda cool you don't see purple too often so decided to go with that one and we gotta give a guy a name and uh, this is one I just typically use for fantasy sometimes and kinda fits the uh, game a little bit very on um, that's that's pretty cool I guess <laughs> now that I see it in, in full it's not as cool as I thought but that's good enough go ahead and get started yeah this game you are uh, you play as a fairy and I know what you're thinking you're like, hey, I like games with bro dude bros and muscles and guns and the color brown what is this game with the fairies well, yeah, it's a little different, but sometimes different is good. And in this case, it's a, it's a pretty cool game. It's an, an RPG. Uh, specifically, it's played in the style of a JRPG. Uh, you know, a, a very typical one of that. Turn-based, uh, no speed stats. Or, or, you know, there's no time uh, variable to it. It's not an active time battle like Final Fantasy. Yep, strictly turn-based. And... Uh, <clears throat> Just kind of simple commands. You got attack. You'll have uh, offensive and defensive magic. Um, uh, you can switch positions. I think they're kind of rows, like they're on Final Fantasy back row, front row type of thing. But yeah, and otherwise, the design of the world is is pretty cool. It's got a lot of really typical, basic fantasy elements. Not a uh, not high fantasy like Tolkien, but. Uh, has stuff like one area you, you go to the Flying Dutchman ship, another area you're at uh, Yggdrasil, the Tree of Life, stuff like that. Just uh, really typical folklore, fairy tales, and fantasies from, uh, you know, kind of all around the world. And it looks like we're going to get into the game and we start out frozen for some reason. We're just in the world in a big block of ice and no one has disturbed us for as long as we've been here, I guess. Cause look, we're just in the we're just in the world, <laughs> but like all good stories, it starts with the protagonist waking up from some kind of slumber. So let's see what we got here. Yeah, checking ourselves out. What's cool about this is the kind of the way you explore the world. You see, we're flying. We can fly in three dimensional space. We can just shoot up into the sky and look down on the land below and kind of pick where to go. Okay, we were slumbering in a crystal, and these guys know who I am. So, need to go see the king, but we have to make sure we can fly, even though technically we're floating right now. <laughs> Isn't that enough? Alright, so, they want to test our ability to fly here. And, if I get the chance here... Yeah, I'm going to give us a little tutorial, that's how you do it. Uh, move ahead, you push left stick. To move, change directions, use the right stick. And no, it looks like the camera's right. I like the uh, uh, Y axis inverted, so when I push up, the camera moves up, and push down, the camera moves down. So let's point ourselves and push the left stick forward. That's how you move. Get to there, and we completed our first mission, and we're flying like an eagle, I guess. We do have kind of eagle looking wings, or bird looking wings at that, probably not an eagle. Alright, so now we gotta go to the top of the tower talk with the king so yeah you can click the left stick down to fly faster and actually I'm gonna stop by this floor here well let me get used to the controls all right <laughs> we got a treasure chest here let's see what we got boots of the earth set and a medium healing potion so let's go ahead and open our menu the select button go to our inventory and there we have boots we have some equipment for it now and it increases the effectiveness of your earth spells uh, bonus doubled if the set is complete. 
So we got those. Otherwise, we have iron weapon and iron clothing, and that stuff uh, increases the effectiveness of our physical attacks and poison. I'm guessing that's poison magic, well, which we have none right now. That's another cool mechanic. When you level up, you'll uh, you'll see a little later in this video. Really cool mechanic with the leveling up. All right, so here is the king. Looks pretty sweet. It's like a elk slash elf. All right, yep, we already know this. Uh, use A to interact with people. And uh, objects, open chests. All right, let's speak to the king. What do we got? All right, why do you need us? Why did we wake up? Uh, well, nope, I have no memory. What happened? I'm not going to lie to the king here. Come on. I, I do like his body tats there. Pretty cool. All right, so, yeah, you see we have uh, the kind of dialogue trees that are typical in, in kind of Western RPGs right now. And, of course, the red answers are, you know, negative, blue, positive. So do this, and he loves us a bit more. How sweet of the king. All right, so yeah, the the different worlds are connected uh, by portals uh, in their in the form of mirrors, and yeah, so we'll connect with all these fantasy worlds. Like one of the worlds is the Flying Dutchman, one is you know, Yggdrasil. Uh, we'll go to all sorts of different fantasy worlds. So uh, that sounds negative right there, that answer. So let's just offer our help, and there we go. That was right. He loves us a bit more. I I can't remember specifically what that love mechanic does for us. Not sure. Um. Yeah, you might notice that I'm doing this in place of Halo this week. Uh, Riggle was sick on Sunday when we were supposed to record, so I had to come up with something new. So, uh, and this is the only thing I felt remotely comfortable doing just because I played it before, and I think it's a pretty cool and unique game. It was uh, developed by Spider, a French company. Um, and yeah, just kind of... You know, kind of a lower budget. Uh, you know, they started out kind of ambitious with it, but once they realized that they're going to have to make it for, uh, you know, the PlayStation Network and Xbox Live Arcade, lots of stuff had to be cut. Like you might notice, there are, there's no voice acting, uh, and, and that mainly dealt with uh, had to do with um, localization because the the team who made this Spider is actually French. So here we go. We get another piece of the iron armor set and some potions. So let's go ahead and equip that. Get get a little closer to uh, completing our set. Three out of five already. Not bad. So yeah, you can see kind of what uh, stat each piece of armor uh, deals with increasing. I guess this is magic initiative. That'd be our speed. I uh, don't have a headband yet. Uh, so let's, let's take a look at the menu real quick. Here is our level level up mechanics here. You see, once we hit level two, we can kind of change our wings. And uh, you'll see, uh, you know, you can physically, you, you'll have a few choices when you level up, and you'll be able to physically change what your wings look like, and that will also give you different abilities. So, And once we hit level three, we can do uh, head tattoos and get some horns. So, yeah, lots of cool stuff there. It's really cool. So, yeah, your character is going to change as you grow. Uh, so we're set out into the world. we got to find some companions. Uh, see if he can give us... Nope, he can't give us anything relevant to the companions. What is the mist, actually? What is this? Let's see. Okay, so that's what's kind of threatening the kingdom. Good enough. That's that's our objective. So, save, save a little time. I actually know where uh, one person is. So, oh, let's zoom down there. Yeah, she's on the beach being attacked by some goblins. Here we go. Oh, they're so adorable. Look at that. <laughs> little goblins. They got little... Little goblins, little goblins, they got little, like, trouts in their mouth. Oh no, the goblins are attacking. Who are you? Oh, well. Oh, we don't need to learn how to fight. This is like a really easy, simple combat system. Okay, I said we don't need to explain, I think. I think I skipped the tutorial. Well, let's see what we got. Okay, yep. Typical, you, you know, just gonna go through menus to choose your attacks. Oh, I apparently did tell her to do the tutorial. Sorry, we'll just go through this. Not much to... Uh, nope, no, we're definitely ready. Let's attack. And starting out, uh, you know, we have some magic, but... Uh, well, we have the option for magic, but it's currently grayed out. Don't have any yet. 
position. Uh, that'll change your position. I, I can't remember if there's front or back rows now, actually. It might just be left to right. And I'm not sure if that does anything. Objects. Uh, here's your... I don't know why they call it objects, not items. But, you know, uh, let's just get to attacking this guy right here. Boom. So, yeah, you see on the right-hand side there, uh, at the bottom, that is the attack order. So, now Fairy is up. And our partner there is Aziel. Aziel, Aziel, I don't know. And, yeah, we're fighting young water goblins, and they're... Freaking adorable. Oh no, I've been hit by a small ch child. Oh lord. No, let's just keep attacking. We don't need to heal yet. Oh man, they're smacking me with some trouts. That's a that's an IRC thing right there. Smack, smack people around with a big trout. I remember that. For those of you who uh, like to peruse the IRC, or at least the, the client I use, MIRC, that was a slap command. So these guys are no big deal. We get down two, three attacks. And that's that. 50 experience and we are almost at our first level. Look at that. So will she join us now that we've helped? Let's see. All right, trying to enter the dragon's caves. Come on, join me. All right, she's gonna make us explore the caves first. Fair enough, we can do that. Let's go ahead, go in here. Boom, enter. So yeah, there's uh, places to explore beyond just the main world. What's funny about this game is uh, it, it is one of the few games that my fiance loves to watch me play. <laughs> For some reason, when I first downloaded this and she happened to catch me playing it, uh, from there on, like every night, she was like, are you gonna play fairies again? I'm like, geez, I, I guess I'm gonna play the fairies. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. You shouldn't usually like to watch me play too much. Oh, but look at that. Just by entering the caves, we got experience points and we gained a level. So we got skill points to uh, distribute to that and get action points. Eventually, yeah, we'll be able to like do stuff like attack twice and, uh, you know, some magic spells will take more action points. So we'll be in better shape to cast them. Whoops, go back up here. Now we get to, we get to change our wings already. So let's see. Enemy struck by a ball of fire, doing earth damage, oddly enough, and then a blaze that lasts two rounds. Lightning damage, I believe our partner, uh, Aziel, has lightning damage. So, I believe last time I got Tornado, which kind of keeps our uh, bird wings. I think it makes them a little bigger, but for the sake of, you know, differentiating ourselves, let's get the dragonfly wings. Eh, we don't need the butterflies, so there's a little too fair, if you know what I mean. But, let's get this. That'll give us... Uh, the fire ability, which is actually does earth damage, which will, uh, you know, our current earth set will kind of complement that, I guess. So there we go. Now we got some uh, sweet dragonfly wings, and we got these guys guarding a treasure chest. So let's go up. Let's uh, test out some of our magic up first. Now she suddenly has some magic. Lightning discharge. So yeah, we didn't want to get that one because she has it. And oh, they are strong against it. So let's see what our fireball can do. Yeah, you see that uh, shield. Uh, icon there. Yep, they're strong against it. So they're they're strong against both of our magics. I can't remember if they're weak against the the other one, the the wind. But uh, that's all right. I wanted to kind of differentiate myself. So we're gonna stick with physical attacks. Uh, mine does have a chance to catch them on fire and burn them for an extra two rounds. It didn't happen then, but yeah, that's uh you know something that can happen. Get a little extra damage in there over time. Come on, bring bring it on. Yeah, see, he's doing nothing to us. Boom. All right, moving right on. We're going to be gaining some levels here, man. I'm telling you. And they're guarding a treasure chest. So what do we got in here? Another piece of the iron set. Okay, we are almost got our double bonus there. Uh, so let's see. Okay, now we got a headband. So that increases our resistance. Okay. Okay, and that kind of explains at the bottom. This increases our physical attack, of course, reduces physical harm, increases the damage caused by your magic. Okay, that makes sense, and increase our initiative. All right, uh, I didn't go over the rest of the menu here. Here's kind of a map of all the areas. See, as we discover them, they'll be able to pop up here. And get around a little easier. Here is a quest log. Uh, just keep track of everything. And then this thing is kind of like a codex, I guess. Uh, keeps track of all the characters you met. 
And we got some people. Oh, oh, here we go. A little preview of the areas. Yeah, there's Avalon, the main area. Yggdrasil. Flying Dutchman. City of Mirages. It's kind of a city in the desert. And it looks like that's it for this game. Yeah, this game was actually uh, developed uh, to be kind of a three-part story. And this is the first part. But sadly, it looks like it's going to be the only part. Oh, we got some crabs. That's what I uh, like about this. Uh, you'll come to realize that we're actually very small in size compared to, you know, the normal world. So things like crabs can be enemies and we'll, you know, we'll fight things like ants and wasps later. All right, well, we're going to have to use magic on the crabs. So they have a lot of physical resistance. So let's see how we can, uh, we can stack up against them. Once again, they're guarding the chest, so definitely want to get by them here. Let's see what she does. Boom. All right, I think that uh, sword icon next to them might mean that they're weak to that. So I, I, think, I think in general they're just weak to magic. Oh, and they do a little more damage than the uh, little uh, small children goblins. There we go, and you can get critical hits with your magic. Yeah. Boom, there we go, caught them on fire. Oh yeah, that's really good damage over time too. 20. Let's see. Take a little more, and if this doesn't kill them, our burning damage might. Yep, there we go. That's awesome. And there, did we get another level? No, we didn't. Okay. Uh oh, we didn't quite reach the chest, though. Make sure nothing over there. Alright, let's go ahead and encounter these guys. So now, gonna have to kind of plan out our attacks here. Uh, I think I want to take out the crab first, just because he's uh, the most powerful. And if I can catch him on fire, that'll be really good. Yes! Perfect. Now we can have uh, Farian focus on physical attacks while she finishes the crab off. Actually, you know what? She didn't even have to. We, we can focus both of our attacks because before he gets his next turn, he's going to burn to death. So, start focusing our physical attacks on one of the goblins. They're resistant to our magic, remember? And yep, these guys are going to attack, but they're not going to be doing too much damage to us. And then the crab's going to burn. Boom! Perfect. So yeah, a nice little strategy. That's what I like about JRPGs, planning out your uh, your turns like that. Yeah, uh, this is actually one of my favorite types of games, the JRPG. So yeah, um, about the graphical style, I forgot to touch on that. Uh, it's like semi cell shaded And look at that, we got skill points, action points plus one. Okay, I see. Maximum action points plus five. So we might be able to store up action points or something. Uh, so let's see. Okay, yeah. And yeah, we can also upgrade these. You see he's got five little circles there. So, But we need to be level four to do that. And we can upgrade. Looks like we have three choices here. We can get a head tattoo. Okay, we can, in general, increase our damage or our maximum life. And you see it puts a little tattoo on us there. Uh, let's see, what's our choice down here? What do the horns do? Gives us a skill, launch a projectile at all enemies who suffer physical damage. And then that, that'll take two actions, see? Uh, instead of, you know, just general attacking takes one. Hmm. Is there some way to see how many actions we can take in a wall? No, I think we will be able to attack twice now. And uh, so we, you know, were we to get that RAM ability, we could either use RAM once or use our attack command twice. So I see the benefit of getting that RAM ability. Let's see, what do these give us? Causing earth damage. Okay, some extra magic. Do, you know, do I want my guy to be a physical attacker? I think I do. And I think I want to give him horns to give him the RAM ability. And that looks pretty sweet right there <laughs> so let's go ahead and do that that's a pretty cool move uh, if you you know you're facing uh, three opponents you know you can hit them all at once and that's uh, more effective than you know attacking twice that will give us a little more versatility I forgot to see what the tracks even uh, changed if anything but yeah there's our horns so we're looking pretty sweet now let's confirm our skill upgrades let's see what we got in our treasure chest here uh, okay, just some potions. Not not a bad thing to have at all. So let's see if we can test out our new ability. I might still do it on the crabs. Uh, oh, oh, what do we got here? A shaman goblin? 
Okay, yeah, now we have two action points, so yeah, we can, we can... We have two of those points to take up. Earlier, just had one, so now, you know, we can do... Oh, yeah, this is her, so... Let's have her use her magic on the crab. Oh, okay, she got two action points, too. So, yeah, you see that one star means it just takes up one action point. Um, and, and we're also going to have her weaken the Shaman Goblin, because I'm not sure how strong that thing is, so let's see. There we go. Okay, yeah, decent damage there. Okay, here we go, yeah. And now we have a projectile attack, and it's going to do damage to all three. Even though it's not going to do a lot of damage to the crab, it's still something, and it's better than just attacking, you know, the, the two goblins and then leaving the crab alone, you know. Go ahead and do this. Boom! Yeah, did a lot of damage to the other two. <clears throat> and a little bit more to the crab. A weakening spell. Let's see. Uh, what's the end of though, then? Okay, so we need to learn white magic. And what do these do, exactly? The next attack we launch will be weakened. Okay. Uh, okay, what's an evil spell? <laughs> Should be obvious. Spell that is not good. Okay, oh, we can learn weakening spells too. Okay, so there's another thing. Yeah, okay, yeah, we're hanging our head in shame. We, we are weakened. Um, so if we... I don't think we'll be able to take out... Let's see if we can just... Take out that crab. Let's start... Stop splitting our damage so much. Okay, let's see if, if this is enough to take out that crab, even though it's going to be weakened. No, he dodged us. But everything is so weak now, we're going to be able to finish him off really well this turn. Oh man, I'm getting beaten up. Not looking good. Actually, I'm not worried at all. There's here we go. I'm going to take him out. And go ahead and finish off the young water goblin. Boom. Boom. So there's kind of the twist, you know. I was about to say, usually RPGs have a little twist on the basic formula, and that was it. Uh... Don't, yeah, don't waste projectile attack or ram attack on, on just one enemy. Of course, you know, it's better designed to attack multiple ones. So let's do our single attack twice. Let's see, our second one was stronger there. The weakening spell wore off. So it only affects one action point. Actually, whoa, man, we <laughs> almost bit the bullet there. Bah! Finish him off. All right, moving right along. Ain't nothing gonna stop us here in the Dragon Caves. But let's go ahead and claim our prize right here. Bracelets of Fire Set. Oh my. Uh, let's go ahead. Let's see. Do I need a potion? All right, here are our potions. A light healing potion. Okay, well, I guess after battle we uh, regain our health. So what is this? Increase the effectiveness of our fire spells. Ooh, it prolongs our burning attacks. I mean, that's pretty good. Um, and in fact, until we get the next iron, what is this? This affects our magic. Yeah, sure, why not? Until we get our next iron, uh, let's boost our fire spell a little bit. So if we happen to get the iron boots, I'll switch everything to iron. Uh, but it looks like we've cleared this area. So let's see what we got here. A dragon's egg. Oh my. All right, apparently that was a good thing to steal the dragon egg. Oh my god. <laughs> a giant crab. This guy looks mean. He looks tough. Okay. Oh man, good thing I just I decided to upgrade my uh, magic there because this guy is probably resistant to the physical attacks. Let's see. Oh yeah, yeah, he's weak to the... There we go, man. Fireball. Let's see if we can get burning on him. Yes, perfect. That'll be great. Oh yeah, taking 20. All right, so he gets two attacks too. So, get two more lightning discharges on him. Oh yeah, keep hitting those critical, that is awesome. I get this. I'm guessing our physical attacks. Okay, I get a reignite him, that's good. Keep that fire going the entire round, kind of uh, shorten the fight there. Uh-oh. Okay, so yeah, there is a front line and back line to this. So we gotta, yeah, they do, you know, you're gonna do less damage to the back row while there is a front row here. 
And I have to think of what to do. I, I th think I'm gonna kinda split my attacks and take these guys out real quick. Yeah, it should just take two rounds, yeah. This will be good enough. Oh yeah, I might even kill him now? Oh, not quite. Okay. That's good. The, the crab in the back is still burning, so he's gonna still take some damage. And she's starting to get low. Um, <laughs> actually, I'm gonna take these guys out, and I don't think the crab can kill her in one turn, so I'll get rid of these guys this turn, and then heal her next turn. There we go. Perfect. And we're probably gonna kill him, so go ahead and switch our attack. Next attack to the crab. And yeah, oh, he's really resistant to the... Uh, uh-oh, she got a weak end. That's okay, because we're going to use a light care potion on her. And she gets one more move and do a lightning discharge. I don't know if that weakening spell will waste itself. I think it did. I think it did waste itself. No, it didn't. Okay. So let's get. Uh, let's try to reignite him. Get him burning again. There we go. Perfect. And he's about halfway, so we're doing great. Yeah, that doesn't do too much damage to us, but you see, it is effective against her. She took a uh, decent damage and had the uh, sword icon next to her. There we go, two criticals in a row. Great. Gonna finish this up in no time. Taking that burning damage. Boom. Oh yeah, I kind of touched on the graphics. Sorry. Uh, yeah, you see, there it's like semi cell shaded. Uh, which I like. I think it looks uh, pretty nice. It's a little, it's kind of gritty in a way, which uh, actually they were kind of going for. They wanted to show even the dark and gritty side of some of these fantasies. And I think it fits the world pretty well. Uh, I think cell shading can be done well and it can be done poorly. Uh, and this is a case where I, th I think it's done pretty well. I kind of like the, the, you know, gritty, uh, non polished look to it. And is that going to be that? No, we're going to finish him off. We have the honors there. All right, we downed a giant crab, and we cleared our first uh, first little area here, first quest, and let's get our dragon egg. And are you gonna become our partner now? Well, let's make her love us. Always good to have the ladies loving you a bit more. Right, okay, we need one more companion. I think this is the king's daughter, if I'm not mistaken. So, it looks like she's kind of at odds with her father. But there you have it, man. We we cleared the first area, got to see the battle system, talked about kind of the overall design and mechanics of the game. So, I hope you're uh, kind of interested in this. Uh, me and Riggle are going to meet to record Halo sometime this week, so this series might have to get paused, but I would like to play it through eventually. But until then, hope you guys enjoyed it. It will be back. Sorry for, you know, there's going to be a delay. But I'm excited to do this and hope you guys are excited with me. And uh, as we, you know, we're going to go out and probably fight some monsters that uh, are the same. We're probably going to fight more little kid goblins. And I'll be editing out some of the fights. So, you know, I'll do, I'll do things to lessen the re repetition because I know fights can get uh, kind of monotonous and long. So I'll treat this series right. And thank you for watching. Hey, if you like it, why don't you throw me a like? If you want to see more, subscribe, because I got more of this coming eventually. But until then, you know, I'll have some uh, Halo 4 coming up, uh, you know, solo, me and Riggle. We gotta, we crack jokes and we're, we, we try to be funny, but probably not, though. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.